It is time to update some firmware. This time it's going to be in my... Well, I say this time as if I've done this on a video. I don't think I have, but uh, I'm going to be updating the firmware on my Rigol DP832A power supply, which is a slightly different model from the one shown in this picture here. But uh, the reason I'm doing it, because you're probably thinking, why would you need to make a video about that? Well, for most devices, it's super easy to uh, update firmware. You get a thumb drive prepared. You go to the manufacturer's website, you pull up your product, you hit support or software tab, and then there'll be a section that says firmware, you download it, you put it on a thumb drive, you put it into the front USB port on your device, it detects it, it asks you if you want to update the firmware, you hit OK, it tells you not to turn it off, and then when it's done, it reboots itself, and then boom, your firmware is updated. Yeah, it's not that easy with a Rigol. So I thought it would be worth making a video of me doing it so anyone who's wanting to do it in the future and are a little apprehensive about it can watch my video and feel more comfortable about the pro more comfortable about the process because I don't know it seems to be helpful to actually see somebody do something than just reading instructions on paper so I'm gonna go ahead and do the entire process uh, with it on camera so you can see everything happening so first obviously I'm doing uh, desktop capture right now because uh, we have to get the firmware and the thumb drive ready so uh, here's the here's the first pitfall so here's the power supply that I have uh, I don't remember paying that but um, anyway they still have it it's the same exact unit uh, so normally what you do is you go to the manufacturer website which is what this is you pull the product up which is what I've done and then you usually go to software so there's drivers for your PC uh, yeah and see right here request latest firmware there's no way to download the firmware. You have to actually request it. So then you put in your name, email, all that crap, and then you know, a day or two later they will say, okay, give us your your serial number, and then another day or two they'll shoot back and say, okay, well we don't recommend it, but here's the latest firmware and here's instructions for how to do it. It is really stupid and annoying. Now if you uh, get on the forums. P people have it uploaded to like a file sharing site, and you can just download it with a direct link. Um, so you could do it that method. I happen to have the email. So actually, if anyone needs the 1.09 firmware, uh, you could just shoot me an email, and I can uh, I can just email it to you. So yeah. So the first thing I wanted me to do is to make sure that. Um, the USB drive that I'm using is recognized and for compatibility reasons anytime I do firmware updates I almost always use USB 2 stick instead of USB 3 but yeah it, it's it's just easier to uh, use USB 2 and not run into any problems plus the firmware files aren't gonna be very big for something like this so uh, first thing they have you do is basically turn on hit utility hit sysinfo and then on the screen um, the soft buttons uh, whenever there's nothing down here like this. When you're on a screen like this, they have little secret key presses you push in a certain order and it does things. So what they have you do is push M1, which is the first button, and then two, and then three. And then that shows you extra information, plus it'll do little pop-up uh, windows to show you extra information. So once you get this screen showed, after you hit the, the three button pushes, and by the way, you don't hold them, you just push one, then the next, then the next, and that's it. As soon as you plug the drive into the back, a message pops up and says USB device recognized. And as, as long as you see that, then they're saying in these instructions that it's essentially good to go. So I already formatted as FAT32. They recommend four gig or smaller. Unfortunately, eight gig is the smallest I had, so I guess we'll find out. So first thing is first, and I have not done this at all. I'm doing this on the fly as I'm recording this, so you are coming along for the ride. It says unzip the two firmware folders titled. I think I've already done that. Oops. Okay. So one says bootloader, one says normal. Yeah. The f obviously the firmware numbers are different, but yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, it says move the gel file in the bootloader directory. Uh, onto the root directory of the thumb drive, which is right here. Done. Plug the in. <laughs> See, I wasn't gonna do this, but now I'm thinking I should because it just happens to be. Uh, well, we're not in a thunderstorm, but we're about to get a light thunderstorm, and I can hear thunder in the background. Not right this second, but when I started recording, I could. 
Ah, <sighs> should I take the risk or should I just go for it? Yeah, I'll probably get a UPS, but it looks like before we do anything else, it wants me to just update the bootloader first. Okay, so uh, disclaimer, first off, if you follow my instructions and you brick your unit, it's not my fault. This is obviously there's always a risk updating firmware. Rigol even recommends against it, even though they'll send you the, the instructions in the firmware, they'll tell you not to do it because it's always a risk, and it's true, it is a risk. Uh, if you have hacked firmware and then you've got one of those key gens that some of the guys on the forums have, have uh, created to basically unlock all the software licenses, obviously doing this, especially putting the new bootloader on, uh, there's a good chance that it's going to get rid of all your uh, unlocked stuff. So yeah, if you've already done that kind of stuff, it's probably not worth it for you. If you already have 1.08, the one that has... Okay, so I didn't even... I, did, I guess I didn't cover uh, the reason... Is there okay the reason I'm doing the firmware updates this is what the stock screen looks like and in my opinion it is ridiculous and stupid so it's got three channels like most power supplies it's got channel one channel two and then a, a third channel that's uh, it's common to the second channel ground shared um, the third channel is only five volt limit or just like a hair over five volts and um, it, they put it in the stupid what, if, what would you call it if it's instead of quadrants, you have three parts instead of four parts? Whatever the word for that would be, this is what this is. You got a top left corner is channel one, top right channel two, the bottom middle is channel three. It's such a stupid layout. It's not natural, it's not intuitive, it's not what you would think if you were to immediately associate a channel with where to look on the screen. And I hate it. I've gotten a little bit used to it, but there have been a couple times I've come really close to blowing something up because I go to set, you know, the voltage for. Uh, let my second channel and I'll look at the bottom or I'll go to change the channel voltage at the third channel and then I'll uh, check technically what's channel two up here and it's super easy to make a mistake and it's ridiculous well if you do the, the firmware update I have firmware 1.05 and I, don't, I think 1.06 is a similar thing but if you have firmware 1.08 or 9 I believe uh, if you hit the display button and then scroll to the bottom. Well, actually, I don't think they're scrolling. You have to use the soft buttons at the bottom. Uh, one of them will say, I think it's UI or something like that, and they'll put in a classic mode. Classic is awesome. It's like what you would expect from most power supplies. The left is channel one, the middle is channel two, the right is channel three, and that that's the only reason I'm doing this because I've personally not had any problems or found any bugs with the firmware that mine came with. Now, some people have had problems, and I'm sure mine has some of these bugs, but none of the things that I've had to do with my power supply so far has run into any of these bugs. But obviously, it'll be good that some of the bugs will be fixed also, but the main reason I'm doing it is because I hate this UI, and I would like it to be the standard UI. And so uh, firmware 1.09, which is what Rigal emailed me, will add that classic option. And I'll show, I'll show you the stock firmware uh, when we get to the bench, and I'll show you uh, that the option for Classic is missing, and then after the firmware update, I'll go show you how you can switch it, and then, uh, yeah, you'll see. So, since we're about to get a light storm, uh, our power almost never goes out here. I'm, I'm in the suburbs where all the power lines are buried, so there's no trees to knock power lines over. I mean, it's... We very, very, very rarely get. I mean, even in the heaviest of storms, power goes out maybe, maybe once a year, sometimes once every other year. I mean, we're very lucky. And so the chance of power going out is pretty slim, but the fact that I'm doing this as a storm is about to hit, I think I'm going to go ahead and follow their instructions and plug it into a UPS. Uh, the only one I have easily accessible without unplugging a bunch of stuff from it would be I have two big rack mount ones. Uh, I'm probably just going to grab one of those and plug it in here. It's overkill, but at least it'll be in a UPS. And if power goes out, it'll probably be more of a flicker than a continual power outage. So I'm going to go grab that. Uh, I guess we'll pull the USB stick out, and then we'll head to the bench and uh, do this first step. And I'm going to go ahead and print the instructions out. So, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, while this is printing, I'm going to go ahead and move the microphone and get everything ready, and we will go to the bench. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you uh, the first thing I mentioned in the instructions was to make sure that it recognizes your USB drive. And this is just a little cheap 8 gig one, the ones you find at the uh, checkout aisle of Micro Center. It's the smallest one I happen to have, and it's also USB 2, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, so you go to Utility, SysInfo, and then you have to hit first, third, and the second. 
and then now you see extra information on the screen. Now I'm going to go behind the unit. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a USB slot in the front like you know all my Agilent stuff, but at least it's got one. I'm going to plug it into the back, and then you should see on the screen uh, USB drive detected. See, USB device detected. As long as you see that according to the instructions, you should be okay. And I printed them onto paper. I really need to get another tablet for this type of thing, so I don't have to waste paper to, uh, you know, get instructions over here. I guess I could have used my bench computer. Didn't think about that. Okay, so let's plug the instrument into an uninterruptible power supply. Well, I did that just because it's about the storm. Normally, I'd say, eh, what are the chances? Uh, but it is about the storm, so <laughs> the only one I had that wasn't tied up to a bunch of stuff uh, is this massive 2U... 1500 volt amp UPS and that thing was heavy but I got it plugged in it's powered through it so if the power goes out we should be good um, so that step is good it says power it on it says when th okay so it wants us to power it on where's the help button so it wants us to push the help button whenever we see three ellipses on the display and that puts it into upgrade mode so I guess here we go Awesome, looks like it's working. Now, I think this by itself might be all it takes for me to get the classic UI. Oh, I didn't show you, I forgot to show you first. That sucks. But I mean, well, you gotta see a picture of what it looks like, but I didn't get to show you that it wasn't one of the um, display options, but I believe this updates the bootloader and then basically the main UI. So we should be able to go in there and set it to classic mode. Uh, now they gave me firmware for... Is that it? Oh, okay, so now... <laughs> great, I keep having to go back and forth. Now it wants me to go back to the computer. It says delete the gel file. Now get the gel file from the normal folder, not the bootloader folder. And put it into the root directory. So, okay, so I should still be able to show you. So, right here is the display button. So this is the stupid... This is the stupid thing I hate. So if I turn all the channels on... So that's channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. It's really annoying, not intuitive at all. I hate it. So if you go to display, right down here you see display mode. So if you hit display mode, normal, waveform, dial, and that's it. There's no classic. So after doing the firmware update to 1.09, we should be able to see that. So the only thing we've updated now is the bootloader. Now we're going to update the actual firmware. Uh, and I think the bootloader update was actually to prevent you from rolling firmware backwards because a lot of people... I think it's because Rygal find, found out about people using key generators to get license keys installed and stuff on here. I think it's probably related to that. I'm not completely sure, but yeah, let's head back to the computer and uh, continue on with our process. All right, so I got everything moved back to the PC. I really need to get another microphone so I don't have to move the same one between my <laughs> workstation computer and the bench, but uh, that'll be a project for another day. Um, so we got all this done and now it's wanting us to delete the bootloader gel file so this is the flash drive so we're going to delete this and then now it wants us to go to the normal folder and this is um, that's not it that is actually the video and audio files for this video that I'm going to upload where okay so bootloader folder is the one we did first and we already got that done so now it wants us to go to the normal folder and move the jail file into the root directory so jail file root directory root directory meaning the basically the lowest directory possible on your drive not in any folders just on the root of your flash drive so now that we got that done now there's instructions there. I'm curious of what that says versus what this says. It says to power cycle it. So it sounds like it wants us to, it wants us to do the same exact thing. Okay, it wants us to update each analog board. Let me I'm really I'm just really curious what this says. Oh great, it's in Chinese. Well, that doesn't really do me any good, so I guess we'll stick with the PDF. Okay, so we already moved the file into the folder. It wants us to, well, it sounds like it wants us to put it back into the device and then turn it on. Push the help button when we see the ellipses on the screen during boot up again. 
I don't know why it says power cycle right here when step 11 was power cycle. After the bootloader program is updated, the instrument will indicate that you can power cycle, which the first time we, when we updated the bootloader, it didn't say that, so. And it says press, press help twice to bring up the help menu screen. Hmm, okay, well, I, now that we got the file on there, I guess we just need to head back to the bench and uh, try the next parts. Okay, so we got the new file onto the flash drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the USB key back into the back. USB device detected. Okay, so it wants us to push the help button when we see the ellipses on the screen again, so here we go. Upgrade successful. Please restart the instrument. Okay, we can do that. This time I'm not going to push anything because it just wanted us to power cycle. But the, the USB key is still plugged into the back. So it's Before we do anything, I want to see if that actually made the change. Oh, yes it did. Look at that. That's, that's what I wanted. So technically I could stop right now, but uh, for this video to be more helpful, I'm going to go ahead and go through updating both analog boards too, just in case there are bug fixes or anything. So. Uh, it wants us to push the help button twice, and then push M. So it wants us to push these buttons in this order, four, two, one. So it'd be four, two, one. Configuring first analog board. And then it looks like when it's done, there'll be another combination I pushed up, update analog board two. So now we do four, two, two. So four, two, two. Do we need to get out of there first? Yeah, I just didn't push it quickly enough. So you gotta push these really quickly. So this time it says it's updating the second analog board. And it says successful. Now it wants us to power cycle. Okay, it says to confirm the update, push utility, sysinfo, and then one, two, three. Oh, one, three, two, sorry. And that's the end of the instructions. Yeah, 1.09. Awesome. So that's actually not that hard. Uh, it's kind of a pain. So uh, basically, to go back over the instructions, um, first you go into utility, you go to sysinfo, and then you hit one three two, and then that shows extra info. And then supposedly on some versions of the firmware, this is the only way to see that it recognizes your USB drive. So at this point, you go to the back of your your unit, you uh, plug in your USB drive, and then you should see in a little pop up screen it says. USB device detected and if you see that then your USB drive should be good to go. Then you put on the bootloader gel file first just into the root of the flash drive. You put it into your power supply in the back USB port uh, and then you just turn the unit off and then back on and as soon as you see the three ellipses on the boot up screen you push the help button and that's it. And when it's done I believe it just reboots itself. But I think if I remember correctly the instructions wanted you to manually reboot it again. Then you put the USB drive back in your computer, delete that gel file, and then get the non-bootloader gel file, the one that just says normal. Put that gel file in the root of the thumb drive, put it into the back of the device, and then uh, turn the unit off, back on, and then as soon as you see the three ellipses on the boot screen again, you push help, and then it'll install that file. And then uh, it'll tell you that you can now restart the device, but it, uh, from what I saw, it did it by itself. So I went ahead and power cycled it again, just for safe measure. And then once you get back into the OS, uh, you push the help button twice. And then from the help screen, you push 
the buttons in this order. Four, two, one. But you gotta push them very quickly. That'll update analog board one, and as soon as that's done, then you push four, two, two. And you gotta do it a second time. Oh, that's why it didn't work. It's not that I didn't push it quickly enough. You have to push four, two, two, two times in a row. So you push four, two, two, and then you wait, and then you push four, two, two again. Then it'll start updating analog board two, and that's it. Once you're done with that, you just turn it off, turn the unit back on, and then uh, confirm that the firmware has updated to the version that you were supposed to update to. And to confirm it, you hit utility, system info, and then you push one, two, three. Or no, one, three, two. Sorry, I don't know why I keep reading it as one, two, three. That's it, that's not that bad. So now, now I have the classic view that I've been wanting. Ugh, I wish it was like that from the start. I don't know why they did the stupid radio screen. And it could be in my head, but I think the fan's more quiet now. Maybe it has a different fan profile, because I. I remember the one thing I hated about this, it, it was more quiet than my Agilent meter, or my Agilent uh, power supply, I mean, but it, it still wasn't quiet. To me, power supply fans should be, should have a pretty aggressive profile, and I mean aggressive in the inverse <laughs> way, aggressively quiet, and then only ramp the fan up as the temperature starts to go up, where these are just pretty loud from the start. So it'll probably be a future mod because this sits pretty close to me. Uh, I ordered the, the devices on my bench uh, with the stuff I use more often closest to me. So I have my uh, bench multimeter, uh, this power supply because I use it more often than my Agilent one, and then my oscilloscope. They're all on the right side of my bench, which is where I'm sitting more often because that's the side where I have all my soldering stuff. And then so it's this ends up sitting usually within about a foot of my microphone it just happens to be where my microphone sits so it's kind of loud and i want to try to get my audio and video quality as high as possible uh for my youtube channel and so um doing a fan upgrade on this to make it more quiet will help a ton with that so that'll be a future video that i'll be doing but i thought this might be helpful some, to some people because this is not as simple as it is to update firmware on the Agilent devices. You know, where you just put it in the front, you go to the menu and hit firmware update, and it just does everything for you. This was, you know, was a multi-step process where you have to push some secret key presses and stuff. So hopefully someone finds that helpful. If so, click the old thumb up, thumbs up button. And if you thought this was too long or unhelpful, push the thumbs down button. Uh, for me, that's just a good barometer of how my videos are. So be honest, don't be shy. I like uh, criticism. Well, it's constructive, good, bad, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.